So we've spent about five hours playing through what we could have dredged so far, and we've made it so far as day 56. As we've continued to play through, we've learned a lot, so much so that we felt pretty confident in putting together a video that's now live on YouTube that'll help you get through at least your first 10 to 15 days a little bit more efficiently than we ever did. So if you get a second after this video, definitely pop over there and give that video a watch. So to start this whole thing off, we've definitely had this game wishlisted on Steam basically as soon as we heard about it. Funny enough, it was actually through a promoted post on Facebook sometime in probably February. But really without reading too much into it, um, kind of what it was about, we were genuinely excited for a game that we wouldn't typically be excited to play. So I must say, we never really watched any videos or really read any reviews because we didn't want to spoil the game for ourselves, knowing that this is one that we were going to tackle, we just weren't sure necessarily when. But we figured by making this video, it'll give us a chance to add our two cents in case it'll help someone make the decision whether to buy it at full price, wait for a sale, or to skip it entirely. So from what we did end up reading, the game was great but relatively short especially considering the money. So for Canadian dollars, it was a little f a little over $40 after tax, so it's not the cheapest game on Steam, but it's definitely not the most expensive either. Um, and also, as far as a uh, short statement for this review, it's definitely been well worth the money so far. Um, to preface this whole review, we really aren't fishermen. Honestly, it's not something that we've ever really been interested in. But what intrigued us about this game was having, you know, a, a simple single player experience that you could play casually and basically come back and pick up where you left off without any kind of drop in skill or anything like that. So there really isn't much of a learning curve to this game once you kind of get oriented with what you're doing and like the controls and stuff, but it's all very simple and relatively easy to understand. What we love most is the sense of progression that seemingly every turn. And this is also fully backed by popping Steve achievements basically left and right along the way. So the premise of the whole story really is that you're an angler looking for work. You smashed up your boat basically against some jagged rocks near Greater Moral. Um, the mayor of the town has his people collect um, your things and bring you ashore, where they eventually load your belongings onto an old vessel that they've um, had lying around. Eventually you come to and then you're met with a proposition to help the town prosper. Ultimately you help a collector retrieve five or six different trinkets at each of the game's main areas. Now we're not 100% because again we haven't really read anything about the game and as far as we've made it in the game there's no clear indication that this is kind of the main kind of quest or this is where it ends but I'm assuming that just based on where we are and what we've seen that this is essentially kind of going to end the game when you have retrieved all of these pieces that the collector is looking for. But all that to say, you're given this new, basically old boat to earn an income. All the while, you're going to be paying off a small loan through the sale of your fish and um, while well, you collect fish and sell them to the fishmonger. So I think that the total boat loan was about $50 and basically you can kind of earn some income as you're selling the fish to the fishmonger and the town is just going to skim some of the sales until the loan is completely paid off. And honestly it doesn't take very long to do that so you're able to start collecting and progressing through the game very very quickly. Um, so just by completing simple mini games at the disturbed water fishing holes basically allows you to reel in many different sizes, shapes, and species of um, fish really all in an effort to fill your ship's inventory and make as much money as you can. So as much as this is a fishing game, exploration game, um, adventure game, it very much is like an inventory management game too. It's almost like a mini game of Tetris just on how the game's inventory system is designed and how you have different kind of equipment slots almost on your inventory grid. Um, and again, because all of the shapes, or all the fishes anyways, are different shapes and sizes, it's an interesting game um, in that you can kind of get lost in that as a puzzle too. And then it gets really interesting when you start sustaining some hull damage, and there'll be random um, blocks that you can't use in the middle, so it can really start to screw up your inventory management for sure. But anyways, along the way, you're able to basically catch and find trophy fish, which are essentially the highest grade versions of a specific fish that you're trying to reel in. And these sell for top dollar when 
when they're fresh at the fishmonger. Um, you can also reel in aberrations, which again are essentially uniquely mutated versions of specific fish that also sell for a great deal of money as well. So. As you progress through the early days in the game, you're really constantly finding new fish to collect and sell that ultimately end up filling out entries in your encyclopedia. This is very similar to the kind of journal thing that they have in um, games like Animal Crossing where basically everything new that you collect, there's some sort of incentive, there's some sort of bonus um, in, in collecting and researching these species, but I thought it was pretty cool anyways. But the idea behind the encyclopedia is really that it holds a plethora of information about the different species of fish once you've caught them, such as where the fish can be found, how it needs to be caught, and at what time of day, but then also how much it typically sells for. So after completing a few of the game's early quests, you'll gain access to a dredge crane, and this is going to outfit your boat with the ability to dredge the bottom of the sea to collect materials like metal, lumber, and cloth. And you're going to need these for upgrading once you've unlocked the dry dock. You'll also be able to snag some trinkets left scattered along the ocean floor that you can sell at a special dealer, which fetch a pretty penny as well. As you progress through, you're also going to be given um, some books to read from NPCs, and this is basically just when you complete um, some quests, or basically they call them pursuits, but also when you complete specific actions at some of these NPCs, for example, buying and selling. Um, but it allows you to stack a bunch of different passive bonuses once these books are completely read. Um, and you're able to keep them all active at the same time, which is super beneficial when you're trying to survive long treks at night. Each of these passives do different things. They're also going to help you with your ability to fish. Some of them are going to affect your equipment. So lots of very cool bonuses from what we've seen so far. And it's, again, very beneficial in the fact that they are all passive and they have the ability to stack. So... Um, another awesome thing about this game is basically upgrading your equipment is very easy to understand. It requires both materials gathered through dredging and then also money acquired from questing and selling fish. So it feels as if every action in this game has a meaning and you're, constant, you're constantly um, working towards something. So it's not like one of those games where like the side quests don't really do a whole lot for you or money seems meaningless in a game or materials seem meaningless in a game. Like it's a nice um, balance of how they've been able to kind of incorporate the crafting and incorporate the, the selling of fish that you're going to need materials and money to complete these upgrades because it's essentially the upgrades that are going to help you progress through um, the, the quests and, and the storyline in this game. So, um, but yeah, so it's very evident that kind of with each upgrade, what it's going to do for you. So as you continue, for example, if you were going to keep pumping your engines, obviously it's going to boost your boat speed, which is super important because you're going to want to cover more ground, especially as the um, in-game timer moves faster when you're completing actions. So if you increase your engine speed, you can cover more ground while time is sped up, which helps you get more done in a day. Um, you can also upgrade your lights so that you can see better at night, but you can also upgrade your fishing equipment to catch bigger, more valuable fish. So again, the game has a very simple, um, seemingly simple anyways, premise, and it delivers on a casual yet enjoyable experience, um, and also has a great sense of progression and that each action and upgrade is worthwhile to chase. The art style is obviously something that's very different than many of today's AAA games in that it's not going to be the most realistic. It's more of an artsy feel, but I personally feel like it adds kind of a level of intrigue and uniqueness to this game and helps set it apart from many of the other kind of same cookie cutter games that are out there at the moment. Um, but I really felt that with this being an exploration game, an adventure game at its core, um, there is a strong focus on crafting and, again, progression as well. Steam, it's also obviously labeled as a Lovecraftian kind of horror fishing game, and where it really shines is at night. So, I mean, to encourage you to risk your haul and your hull at night, um, some of the rarest fish can only be caught at night, which is a pretty cool idea. 
obviously at night you're going to face plenty of different obstacles while you're out there in the dark um, from literal rocks and shipwrecks to gargantuan sea monsters we haven't really spent a whole lot of time out at night yet so we've really only encountered one or two of these monsters so far um, just because we haven't spent a whole lot of time upgrading our boat just yet um, but I will caution that the, bo that the boats on the water at night that look like yours and sound a foghorn like yours, these are not boats. They are looking to basically wipe you from existence and it can get pretty nerve wracking trying to get back to port before your, entire day was, before your entire day's work is essentially thrown overboard by the monster's impact or your boat is just sunk entirely which causes you to reload from a previous save. So. All in all, really, we are thoroughly enjoying our time with this game. From what little expectations we had for it, it's quite surpassed all of them um, up to this point. And we, re we really do look forward to kind of getting a chance to dive in a little deeper to see what we learn before kind of giving a final review once we've wrapped up basically everything that there is to do in the game. But our recommendation is if you're looking for a new game that's really different than many of the other popular ones out there right now this is definitely worth a look into especially if you're into casual games with again a relatively simple premise but logical prog logical progression and great art this one is definitely one to take a look at hopefully this video helped you if it did give us a like and subscribe to friendly frenzy games also if you're playing dredge or looking to play dredge drop a comment and we'd be happy to chat